Smoke Report has been made possible by our friends at Phrase.com, a community of smokers and vapor enthusiasts. Join the conversation in the forums by visiting us at www.phrase.com. We're supposed to get along. Hey, you're supposed to be my friend. That's right. Howdy, y'all. Welcome to another Smoke Report with me, your host, Jay Ty. On this show, we have a factual study to discuss, which looks at how smoking bans in casinos affect revenue. But first, making news this week is the failed Proposition 29 in the state of California, where a $1 increase to the cigarette tax was put to a vote and failed by less than 1%. This result and the story behind the campaign have many fascinating nuances. For example, that a state as liberally minded as California voted it down in the first place. The $1 tax increase headed by cancer survivor Lance Armstrong would have gone to fund cancer research. So, why did it fail? Could it be that people are just fed up with paying more and more taxes? That's a good possibility. Of course, it could also have something to do with those opposed to the tax, like Philip Morris and other big tobacco companies, who spent $47 million to fight it That's over $10 million more than the governor of the state spent getting elected, by the way. Or maybe people realize that modern medicine really is not interested in curing the disease as much as they are in treating the disease because that's where the profits are. So why give them more money for research? It's a complicated issue, and I'm sure there's a very complicated answer, and I'm sure I've offended people by this point. But if you're a smoker in California, this just looks a lot like a victory. We'll be back in a minute. But always be my friend. Cause you're supposed to be my friend. You'll start acting Still like good. invention of the 21st century, the SafeSig electronic cigarette. The SafeSig implements an innovative flow sensor to instantly turn itself on and off, eliminating the need for any power buttons. Since it's not real smoke, the vapor is virtually odorless, and it won't smell up your hair or stain your teeth. For more information or to order now, please visit our website, www.thesafesig.com, or call our toll-free number, one 866 9972332 you must be 18 to order you know uh everyone talks about how smoking affects people's health and there's no argument that it does medical and life insurance policies routinely ask about tobacco use and concerns over secondhand smoke has resulted in bans in most all public places and some private. But do smoking bans actually hurt businesses? I've always said that I believe most smokers understand bans in restaurants and on airplanes and such, but pubs, bars, taverns? What about casinos and private clubs? Should the owners of those places have the ability to decide on their own if the use of tobacco is permitted or not? If smoking is allowed at a neighborhood bar, no one forces non-smokers to go. If they don't want to inhale smoke, they can always find another bar or sit their butts at home. Interestingly, I found a research study the other day conducted 
by the Federal Reserve Bank of St. Louis looking at the revenue of casinos in Illinois after a smoking ban was implemented there and comparing it to nearby states like Indiana, Missouri, and Iowa, which have no smoking ban. Mm -hmm. The study concluded that while gaming revenue was generally slightly down, the revenue in Illinois with the smoking ban dropped over 20%. Look at this chart. Yeah. And that, my friends, translates to a loss of $400 million. Money that wasn't taxed and money that didn't go to people's salaries to help feed their families. So I know this is a hot issue. I've probably pissed off more people. And I know it's way too complex to discuss in its entirety on this little show. I just wanted to point out that there's a lot more to consider when you ban smoking than what first meets the eye. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time on The Smoke Report. You're